So I always hated it, and I still do, when people ask me what my favourite film is, and I think it's because there's this idea that our favourite film has to be the best film in the world. And actually, I've come to the conclusion that your favourite film can just be your favourite film because you like it. You don't necessarily have to justify it, and you can have more than one favourite film. And I think this is where we go wrong, because we don't allow people just to like them to kind of make it this big academic subject which it is there's a, there's a huge huge part of the film industry that is so academic and i personally love that kind of, but i also love watching the chick flicks the rom films they're just really terrible terrible action films and this is why i wanted to ask team back what their favorite films were what's also interesting when talking about this is that the other side of the argument arises and that's with so many films looking at them from the perspective of, say, 2020, 2021. Um, it's this idea of can we watch or should we watch films that are linked to the Harvey Weinstein of the world and the people like that. And it's such a huge debate and it's something that I've written about extensively and it's um, even something that I sort of suggested to media readers to just have a look at. And I think it's such an interesting argument as to whether we can watch films like American Beauty, which is obviously a Kevin Spacey film. Um, in itself, there's some issues that it has been called a kind of problematic film at times. But at the same time, can you love it because it's visually beautiful? That's down to you. One movie that I think everyone should watch at least once in their life is Eat, Pray, Love, um, based on the book by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, I think it's just the perfect example of how life is not linear. When you want to um, make a change and you feel like things aren't feeling right, you can make that change, even if it goes against um, the social norms of how life should go. Um, and just explore yourself and explore the things that you enjoy. And then I think it sets you up really well as a viewer to go read Big Magic um, by Elizabeth Gilbert, which is a book that um, shows you how to create expressively and freely without fear controlling your beliefs and your limits. Of course, I had to join in and for me it has to be When Harry Met Sally I didn't want to choose this film at first because it's deemed by so many people as a great film and a great split screenplay, but for me it's my everything film. It's a film I watch on my birthday at Christmas during the autumn, sometimes in between. It's a film that connects me with my best friend in so many ways. Um, it's certainly the film that made me discover Nora Ephron's writing and that soon led me to discover people like Barry Fisher, Rob Reiner, Fran Leibowitz. And I'm not sure if I'm making this up, but I think it's the film that sparked me to become a writer and get into film, I think. One film I think everyone should watch at least once in their life is Drive, based on the novel by James Salis. The film stars Ryan Gosling as an unnamed stunt-turned-getaway driver and it follows him slowly falling in love with his neighbour, Carey Mulligan. For me, it's the cinematography and the soundtrack, which are the massive selling points for this film. I absolutely adore the interiors, the use of colour, the retro feel that it generates. For some reason, the soundtrack just manages to create the aesthetic of the film without even having to watch it you could listen to the soundtrack and just feel like you're a character in the movie and I think they're the best kinds. Now I'm no film expert and I'm sure someone could explain the look and feel of this film a lot better than me. However, since the first time I watched it, which was back at university as part of one of my modules, I've just loved it. Being 17 is a 2016 French drama movie um, directed by Antoine Teixin. Um, it is about the romantic and sexual awakening of two adolescents. And I love this movie because it's absolutely delicate and very real. There is no overly romanticized content. 
and the actors are fantastic they're like very young and i think the entire context is um kind of very realistic but also um sweet enough to make in a very nice romantic um movie i guess partly the conclusion here is watch the films you want to watch watch jurassic park because you like the dinosaurs watch coyote ugly because you love the leanne ryan songs and i guess be aware of the context surrounding the films that you watch i think that's really really important especially in this day and age but at the same time punishing yourself by not watching something you love or actually punishing the film itself because i think people do forget how many people are involved in a film we're talking about everyone from the research phases right down to the set decorators the actors just because one or two or three people are linked to something that's controversial or bad in a film you also have to remember there's hundreds and thousands of people involved in a film who had nothing to do with that and you're punishing the work you're punishing something that took them months maybe even years so you just have to kind of bear that in mind as well.